And mm-hmm. it turns out it leads to a log normal distribution of income in an ideal free market society. And in actual societies, we observe that the bottom 97% follow log normal, but the top 3% follow something called a power law. And, and we, our theory explains why that happens also, but that's the gist of the whole thing. It's interesting that you finally concluded on the log normal as uncanny, uncannily close it is to the Maxwellian distribution of, yeah. of velocities in yeah. a... Yeah. In a in a st- in a stat thermo yeah, description right, of a gas, right, right. how did uh, economists take to the fact that a chemical engineering is lecturing them? Right, uh, not very well. Uh, the the key idea here turns out to be uh, entropy. So you asked, uh, you know, how did the mathematical uh, approach uh, evolve? And because of my training in statistical thermodynamics with Professor Keith Govins and so on. Um, I realized it took me, you know, it took me about 10 years to unlearn the, uh, tra- you know, the message we were taught about entropy. Entropy, we are told, is a measure of disorder, and then equilibrium is reached when, the, when you have maximum disorder, you know, the molecules are spread all over and so on. And it took me 10 years to realize that uh, this is a limited interpretation. And then the correct interpretation of entropy is that it's actually a measure of fairness. Mm. And how so, you may ask. So, for example, if you, take a, if you take a container, and let's say that you divide that into two halves, and then uh, put a diaphragm in between, and put all the molecules on one side, and there is no molecule in the other side. Now, when I remove this, quickly all the molecules will disperse, and statistical equilibrium will be reached when the molecules are spread all over. And um, now if I were to ask, tell you that when, when, it, when they were all compressed on one side, what, you know, if you were to ask, what is the probability of finding a molecule on the left half of or the one side of the box? It will be one because they're all there. What is the probability of finding any molecule on the right-hand side? It is zero. Once I remove it, I ask, what is the probability of finding a molecule on the left half? You'll say 0.5. What is it on the right half? It's 0.5. But if I were to say, no, 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 remember, they all used to be on the left half before you removed the diaphragm. So they they are going to be more likely to be there. So I would say it's 0.7, 0.3. You would say, no, that's that's an unfair assignment of probabilities. Mm. The fairest assignment is equal probability. So entropy is really a measure of fairness in a distribution. Mm. Okay, it so happens that that leads to a maximum disorder, but it it is not disorder itself. Now, this is the problem economists have always had. Mm. When people try to apply statistical mechanics to economics, and they will say, well, economic systems will reach equilibrium when there is maximum disorder, they will say, why would we, we know our markets work well when there is more order. Why would I want to maximize disorder? This conceptual block has stopped from, uh, as economists believing entropy is a measure of disorder, that's why they object to any statmic treatment. So I've shown mm. that by maximizing entropy, you're actually maximizing fairness. That makes economic sense. We know that markets work when everyone feels they are getting a fair deal. And so there's a lot of resistance to these ideas because of the misunderstanding they've had about entropy for about 100 years now. And uh, hopefully that will change going forward. Underlying this whole thing is a, is a framework of, as you said, motivated individuals, statmec for motivated individuals, and you've given it the name statistical teleodynamics. Tell us a little bit about what's different about that framework from the standard Boltzmann statmec framework. Right. So going back to my remark that uh, molecules don't make decisions and that they are prisoners of Newton's laws, simply they follow F equals M A D. Whatever force that's acting on the molecule is going to determine its fate. Uh, the molecule has no control over its fate. Whereas individuals, you and I, and even animals uh, to a lesser degree, have some control over their fate because they know what they like, they don't like. They, they pursue goals. They basically pursue utility. Mm. They want to increase. I mean, this is what Darwin said. Right, I mean, the survival of the fittest is actually survival of the one which has the, what is fitness? Fitness is a measure of utility. Sure. So survival of the 
uh, utility is really Darwinian uh, idea. Mm. So every living thing tries to have more utility. Humans, we want to switch to jobs which pay better salaries, a better title, better perks, and so on. We want to marry partners who are better looking or better capable in some ways and so on. Again, we are pursuing utility. The same things animals do. Even cells do that. Bacteria, for example, when, you know, in, some, in a phenomenon known as chemotaxis, they, will, they know how to locate food source and they will swim towards that. Hmm. They are again pursuing utility. So in the Greek word for goal is telos. Mm. So goal-driven uh, systems, I came up with the name teleodynamics. St uh, instead of statistical thermodynamics, when you apply it to goal-driven systems, I call it statistical teleodynamics. In thermodynamics, the dynamics of the agents are driven by thermal agitation. Whereas in teleodynamics, like the behavior of, uh, of an economic system with millions of people, buying and selling uh, goods and services, their, their dynamics of switching jobs and etc. is driven by their goals, hence it's teleodynamics. So the problem was when I first asked this question, I didn't know how to bring in this idea of goal into statistical mechanics. There's no idea of goal in statistical mechanics. Mm. Conceptually, it is not there. Molecules don't have goals. So there is no way to accommodate this idea of utility in this. Then it took me a while. Then I figured out uh, the way to do it is to take ideas from statistical mechanics and combine it with game theory. Because game theory is all about goal-driven strategic uh, decision making. Molecules make random decisions. People make strategic decisions. Combining these things, I found a way and bring in utility into statistical mechanics. Picture and retain the entropy idea, and entropy now becomes a measure of fairness. And, and then the, all the math works out, and then when I take like the three, two laws of statistical thermodynamics, I have two laws of statistical teleodynamics. And then when I take the teleodynamic laws and make my agents goal-free, like molecules, I get all of statistical thermodynamics as a special case. Wow. The Boltzmann distribution comes out. So the log normal distribution in economics is the equivalent of the Boltzmann distribution, the exponential distribution for energy.